1957, the court came up with something uh, that extended um, graph union and made a three-dimensional version of graph union. So we had an electronic structure where we stacked carpet layers. And uh, then he added a magnetic field in 1960, and I came on the scene at the end of 1960 after his paper was published. So his paper came just at the right time for me to make use of it. And so uh, what I did at that time, so this is very early work. Uh, we, at, at the time I entered the field in 1960, we didn't understand the dispersion relations with graphite. I know for people in the audience, it's very hard to imagine that a simple and fundamental material like this, we had very little idea about it. And so uh, I was working on, on, on this by studying transitions, optical transitions from the lens of conduction band in a magnetic field. At that time, we didn't have nanostructures, so we didn't have any quantum confinement, so we did quantum confinement with a magnetic field. So this is like uh, the, the uh, quantum levels that you can make by, by quantization. So uh, you can see that we studied different transitions. And the upshot of that work was to uh, establish what the electronic structure was and what the nature of the Fermi surface was. The most important uh, outcome of this work and what is relevant to what we're doing today is that when we started these studies, it was believed that the uh, holes were at the K point and the electrons were at the H point. And when that belief was uh, uh, rationalized into studying the electronic structure, there were many experiments that didn't work, that didn't fit the, any model that was present. So by changing and, and properly identifying that this pocket here had to do with electrons, this one had to do with holes. Everything fell into place, and the electronic structure made sense. And then we took off from that. So uh, the, the early times, the 1960s, were involved in establishing the electronic structure of the mother material when you stack all these layers together. And the experiment was basically done uh, by using right and left circular polarization so that we could distinguish two transitions that were very similar in energy, but not quite. And by doing this, we could get the sign of the carriers. There's a right-hand rule that tells you about how the charge moves in the magnetic field, and that, that's what we did. So uh, this experiment turned the band structure up and upside down. We properly uh, identified electrons and holes and is what we use today. So I thought I would say that this is the end of all the materials. In 1971, I was invited to Brazil to give for a five-week course that we gave. There were four lectures from around the world. I was one of the four. And this was a lecture, not for a lecture series, not for students, but for professors. At that time, Brazil had a very small graduate program, almost not at all. And somebody made a decision in Brazil to invite these four lecturers uh, to say what was happening with advanced matter physics uh, so that they could teach this to graduate students and start a full graduate program so that not everybody would be traveling to do graduate work. There's some could be established within Brazil. So this was a very important time for me to have this opportunity to visit. And uh, I gave lectures in general solid state physics of what the kind of things that we would teach students, but I also included a little bit of current research and I talked about this. So I, this is the historical content of this part of my talk. So the, uh, 1971 was my first visit Brazil, and I was here for two months, roughly, six weeks, something like that. And um, then I entered NANO myself when I returned. 1973 was my entry into the NANO world, and I 
was here in 